Hello, and welcome to this review of the Empower Your Database session from Dell Technologies World. Uh, my name is Vince Weston. I'm a technical evangelist for PowerMax, and I look forward to walking you through this presentation uh, review that we did um, for customers who were able to make it out to Las Vegas this year. Uh, so what we're talking about today is using uh, the Dell Technologies tools um, to empower your database, to give you a great infrastructure um, that's optimized for business continuity, uh, malware recovery, uh, efficiency, effectiveness, uh, a whole lot of wonderful capabilities that we're going to drill into. And the focus here is really on your outcomes. So how do we bring Power Edge and Power Max together um, to accelerate the results that we give you? Um, how do we do that, whether you're doing things that are more traditional um, or you're doing a whole bunch of the more leading edge uh, technologies in terms of what's going on with styles of development and compute and database and all the rest. Right? So we can help to provide great performance and real-time analytics and scalability, automation, uh, accelerating the uh, development of insights on your business. Um, while also providing continuous operations, dealing with growth, dealing with sustainability, um, providing intrinsic security, supporting the enterprise workloads that you need to run the business, and dealing with that in all kinds of aspects. So whether you're dealing with applying artificial intelligence to new workloads, you're dealing with large databases, virtual desktops, high-performance computing, data analytics, um, transactional systems, whatever you're doing, uh, we have the chance to bring the power of both PowerEdge and PowerMax to bear uh, to help you generate uh, more productive outcomes for your business uh, in a shorter period of time and a lower overall cost. So let's talk through what we're, what we're talking about building. Um, our strategy around this mission-critical infrastructure um, is to be able to support whatever applications you're running. So whether you're doing traditional apps with uh, ERP and relational databases, um, VMs, um, digital records, or, or you're doing next-gen things around the whole digital experience, um, lots of analytics, artificial intelligence, uh, sucking data in for the Internet of Things, right? We want to be able to, to help you to deal with any and all of those um, applying a consistent infrastructure using the uh, PowerEdge servers and the PowerMax storage. Uh, and so what we're going to explore in this presentation is how we're doing that, how these are better together, um, how we're applying some very similar parts of technology uh, across what many people might think of as very different parts of our infrastructure technology. Right, so we've got this, a lot of the same underlying pieces working in both PowerEdge and PowerMax uh, to help benefit your workloads over time. Now we're going to talk today about three different areas of, of optimizing your infrastructure strategy. Um, we're going to talk about accelerating insights. How do we help you reach insights faster to drive more business value from the data that you have about your operations and your customers? Um, how do we support continuous operations, making sure that the mission critical and business critical systems stay available uh, 24 by forever so that your users are always informed and up to date and that you're making all of your timelines, um, that you don't have any challenges from an IT point of view uh, in keeping up with everything you need to do for business. Uh, and finally, we're going to talk about the intrinsic security uh, built into the platforms that can help to make sure that your data is safe and secure um, in this crazy world that we're living in. So drilling tighter into the accelerated insights, um, we're going to focus first on, on how do we help you um, transform things to better meet your new business initiatives. A lot of customers are working very hard to bring new technologies to bear to be able to find more knowledge out of the information they already have. Right? So that means we need you know, the mission-critical, always available infrastructure. We need to be able to scale up uh, compute, uh, handle large in-memory databases. We need to be able to scale up storage to be able to store all the other information that doesn't fit memory. Um, we're able to work for um, virtual and bare metal deployments. 
We need to be able to have large bandwidth to be able to move data back and forth as needed between storage, between sites, uh, to the servers, wherever it may be most useful. Um, and we need to be able to support mixed workloads. I mean, some things are running large databases, some things are doing artificial intelligence, other things are doing Internet of Things, whatever pieces you're doing, you've got to be able to mix and match all of it together uh, and not have to buy silos of infrastructure to support that. Um, so Paramax is supporting the data for the database layers and the large chunks of data for Internet of Things and whatever the, the data is that needs to be persisted um, in the background to support the infrastructure. And then PowerEdge, um, you can have your, your application layer, which will have the core infrastructure apps may also have some memory dense configurations for doing very large in memory databases like SAP HANA. Uh, whatever needs to be done, um, we've got the right infrastructure pieces and we can bring them to bear to help support that. Um, so as we look at accelerating this in terms of data processing, the traditional databases have been, you know, growing uh, capacity within a database. So you might have things that start out at, you know, a terabyte or two and become five terabytes, 10, 50, 100. Um, we've got a number of customers that are running things in the petabyte range uh, of a single database and then many databases tied together for, for data federation. And, and as those databases become larger, how do we deal with bandwidth needs? How do we deal with the server connections? How do we deal with things like backup and data recovery and all that? And, and that's all great. Then the world starts saying, well, I want to do in-memory databases. We're not building any of those at the petabyte scale yet. Um, but the needs keep getting larger. So what do we do about how to move data from internal memory um, to external storage as needed for paging things in and out? Um, how do we make sure that we can alleviate any of the bottlenecks that come around in-memory databases? How do we help you do NoSQL stuff right, with even larger flows of data? Now maybe instead of bulk data reads, it's more data streams. And how do we help you drive all that? Um, and then you start getting into the GPU accelerated systems, right? How do we balance CPU and GPU configurations and um, be able to provide uh, systems that can allow you to choose what the right balance is? What do I need today? Do I need more GPUs? Do I need more CPUs? Uh, do I need more just raw bandwidth? Do I need more memory capacity? Do I need more storage capacity? Lots of flexibility depending on where your workload may happen to be on a given day. Uh, so, as we look at those, you know, we've got solutions around some of the traditional databases, uh, again, with Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, um, in memory with, I mentioned HANA or MemSQL, um, NoSQL, Couchbase is an option there, uh, a number of others, um, and then some of the, the GPU accelerated things you see listed here right, with options to throw in GPUs. And so we've got, you know, different storage options uh, around capacity on PowerMax and such. And we've got server options that are really tied to how do we help you with um, the balance of compute and memory, or how do we deal with very large memory footprints, or how do we deal with the ability to, to add in GPUs um, along with your uh, CPU and additional RAM. Um, the Dell four socket systems do a great job of uh, being flexible across this. Uh, and in some cases, you may want to choose some different servers with different capabilities in different places. Um, we've got all of that available within the Dell product family to be able to meet any of the needs. And so, you know, why might customers want to look at some of these four socket servers? Um, well, we can do a lot more CPU cores in four socket servers. We've got a lot more memory channels, so you get a lot more bandwidth. Uh, we've got a lot more memory capacity. So for the in-memory databases, uh, we've got the ability to scale up more of what you hold in memory. And the more you can hold in memory, the faster you can process it, the faster you can get data, right? Um, and also by using uh, the Intel Optane persistent memory, uh, we can actually drive down the cost of, per terabyte of memory in the server. And so the four socket server being able to use a collection of the Optane persistent memory um, gives us a way to uh, meet the capacity needs of these very large in-memory systems um, without having to spend as much money on DRAM. Uh, so it's a great way to 
uh, get the best of both worlds. So lots of options depending on where your focus is in terms of which servers the best way to get there. Um, but lots of things we can help drive with the, the Intel 4 socket server platform options. Uh, in terms of the PowerMac side, we're using a lot of very similar technology. We've expanded our cache. Um, so the new generation of PowerMacs, the 2500 and the 8500, uh, actually have moved all of the metadata for the system to use the same Intel for system memory technology we were just talking about for the servers. Uh, so it's the same idea. I take dim form factor uh, Optane memory uh, and I drop it in and I use it you know, in the one case for the servers, I'm using that as um, non-persistent memory, right? It's just another way to get there, um, but provide large capacity at a lower price. In the case of PowerMax, we're actually using these as persistent memory uh, systems and persistent memory DIMMs. And so we're able to persist that data across failures and other things. Um, it eliminates the need to vault it and all. So same underlying technology some different ways of applying it uh, to provide extra capacity uh, for customers and extra capabilities for our systems. Um, we've changed the packaging. So our base system is now only five rack units tall. Um, what you see here on the screen is a uh, node pair on the bottom, which is the, the node one and two for an array, and then a tray of 48 drives above that in a dynamic media enclosure. And so at 5U, you get a full array that can be petabytes of scale, um, and that's got tons of bandwidth um, and, you know, 32 host ports and all these wonderful things uh, in this small packaging that helps customers both from a floor space point of view as well as a power cooling efficiency point of view, right? Being able to use larger drives uh, and take great advantage of them um, by being able to you do single drive upgrades, um, be able to do radically, radically faster RAID rebuilds and such. Um, the new systems have a great flexible RAID design that keeps everything balanced and allows us to do things like single drive upgrades and all. Um, so there's some great stuff going on with the next generation of PowerMax um, that lets us take advantage of some of the technologies that are available in the world today and, and drive more efficiency for customers uh, so it's uh, again, it's a great set of solutions, and we'd like to talk about that some more. Um, so that's kind of the accelerated insights part. Let's talk about the continuous operations um, and what we're doing there. On the PowerMax side, um, we've got replication inside the array and across arrays. So you've got servers connected to the array, and we're doing snapshots with SnapVX. We can do 64 million snaps in the array. Um, and we'll talk later about what some of that can do to help with things like resilience around malware, because um, it's all automated and simple. Um, and then we've got copies um, in and across data centers. So whether you want to do metro uh, between two arrays in buildings that may be geographically very close, or you want to do just synchronous copies, or you want to do asynchronous copy out of region kind of things. Uh, SRDF is the gold standard for replication, um, and we're able to provide that resilient, persistent storage that even a lot of the newer applications are finding they need. Right? You get to, to some of the new uh, DevOps worlds, and you're doing all these things dynamically, and you're creating new applications, and it's great that the servers can come and go and you can create VMs on the fly, um, but a lot of those systems are creating data that they need to persist. And being able to tie that back to a PowerMax and have the data not only persisted, but you know snapshots for data protection and replications with RDF um, can allow you to give all of the um, business resilience that's required for the data while you're supplying a system that's flexible enough to support all of your on-demand configuration work uh, that's going on from the, the DevOps point of view. So how do you manage all that? Well, we've got the Cloud IQ portal. Um, it gives you one way to look at everything across the Dell infrastructure. So you can see you're filling in storage pieces and fabric pieces and data protection pieces and um, HCI stuff, servers, IP networks, whatever all comes together in Cloud IQ. So that you've got a single portal that will let you look at everything in your infrastructure, even if it's in different data centers, uh, even if it's in colos, wherever it is, right? We can help with all that. Um, and then we've actually, in addition to the desktop view, which will give you all your details, 
We've also got a mobile view that you can pull up on a phone. And so, you know, as, a, as an IT professional, you're out to dinner with your spouse and you're doing something um, and somebody calls and says, hey, I need help with X. And you get to make the decision, do I stay at dinner and maybe not have a job tomorrow? Or do I open up my phone and look at things and say, oh, yeah, I can see where the problem is and, you know, call these people to work on this. It's not, you know, if I'm working in storage, that's a server thing. If I'm working in service, yeah, that looks like a storage thing. But you can, you can make calls remotely without having to go log into a bunch of systems and figure a lot of things out. It's all available right there in Cloud IQ. Uh, and Cloud IQ has trending and alerting and, and lots of great things. Um, and we've got, if you don't like the way we're displaying it, we've got a REST API and you can suck all that data out into whatever, uh, you know, CMDB or other tools you want to use for looking at your infrastructure, for looking at alerts, for looking at trends. Uh, we can fit all that together. All right. So you've got the uh, ability to use some of the AI operations tools. Um, you know, Cloud IQ ties in with everything, data protection, um, PowerMax, PowerEdge, Fabrics, all of that, right? And so we can support all of this, support you in a mission critical world, um, keep everything up and running at all times, um, and support, like I said, the, the DevOps kind of continuous operations. So you're doing the build and the deliver and all that, and whether you're using uh, Docker or whatever pieces, Ansible pieces, um, we can integrate with and support all of that, um, CSI, right? whatever you need. Um, we've got hooks built in. You can manage the storage. You can manage the servers. Um, you can you know, automate all of this and set it all up. We can scale it out. Um, we give you the security that you need. Um, and then we can interface to the cloud pieces and everything else um, and give you all the components you need to make all this work well um, while delivering all the data protection, while delivering all the enterprise resilience, while keeping you uh, ready to manage all of that as we go forward. Um, so let's talk about some of the intrinsic security pieces of this. Um, you know, within the server side, we've got the uh, ability to, uh, you know, protect, detect, and recover. So we've got the, the granular access to controls, the uh, crypto authentication. Uh, we've got data protection at rest and in flight. Uh, we've got logging and secure alerting. We've got intrusion detection, um, drift, clock drift, change detection, you know, what, what people are going in trying to tamper things. Um, recovery at the BIOS level, at the OS level, um, easy and rapid recovery, looking for vulnerabilities, all those kinds of things. Uh, and this is all built in, right? So this is at the core of the product. Um, starting a few generations ago, we started adding in um, the secure boot pieces um, and the zero trust infrastructure and being able to make sure that everything is verified um, from, uh, from the motherboard up, the BIOS and the firmware and all those things, right? So, um, so we're able to do all this and give you all the security um, using industry standards, making sure that all the components are real, making sure that everything is as you plan it uh, without having to give up, give up any performance or flexibility in how you want to roll things out. Um, on the PowerMax side, we have the world most secure storage. So you have the stig hardening and the um, the FIPS 140-2 uh, validation for DARE. You've got role-based access controls uh, with multi-factor authentication um, and such. Uh, we've got the, the cybersecurity components with anomaly detection and ransomware. I'm going to talk about some of the ransomware stuff in the next slide. Um, we've got the ability to do um, data encryption and, and uh, change detection from HBAs um, on the links um, over remote links. We're able to do um, the key rotation in the new systems. We can do external key managers. Um, we're using self-encrypting media now. And we've got the ability to have the, the immutable hardware root of trust. Um, we've got secure boot. We've got digital sign firmware, all, all the things you'd expect, and then some uh, to make sure that we're the most secure platform and you can trust us to manage the access to all of the critical data that you're putting on this storage and counting on to be resilient. Uh, I mentioned the idea of malware protection and snaps. So one of the things we've got built into these arrays is the ability to do policy-driven snaps. 
So you can just say, hey, I these are my critical applications. So I've got a policy. I'm going to snap them every 10 minutes for malware protection. They're going to be secure, and I'm going to keep them for two or three days. Right? And all of those secure snaps cannot be deleted. Um, and they provide you lots of points in time. So when you detect something going on, you can go back, look at multiple points in time, recover in seconds to any one of those images, um, even you know, bring it up on a link target, be able to examine that from a server, right? be able to go look and see which version is best and then restore that, um, and still be able to keep a snapshot of the final result. So you can do all your forensic um, discovery around, gee, what happened to my system at the end um, without having to keep production down, right? You've got the image sitting there. It's a secure snap. It's saved. And, and you can just hold on to that for as long as you choose to uh, to make sure that all the forensics gets done and none of that data gets tampered and everybody can figure out exactly what happened. And uh, we've got early detection tools to so watch for changes um, as malware comes in, it starts encrypting all your data. And so the data reduction side goes from you know, normally 80 or 90% of your data is reducible. Um, on the malware uh, tampered with data, that's zero. Right? And so we can watch for the changes in reducibility and say, hey, you know, this data was 90% reducible. And in the last 10 minutes, everything we're getting in is all you know, 0% reducible, something has changed, come look at this data, right? So really critical focused alerts that help you understand this is something that's changed. It's probably bad news and it's possible that your application team turned on encryption for everything and just didn't tell you. Um, but, you know, if it's malware, this is something that should give a limited number of false positives and be really helpful in early detection um, so you can quickly recover from any kind of an attack. And again, with all those snaps there, you can just roll back to the last point in time that was valid with no malware, um, recover, move forward, um, and of course, never give the bad guys any money. Um, we also have the ability to do things like SRDF to replicate beyond the array. Um, we have the ability to do vault protection on a remote array that nobody can do management on. Um, so, you know, the, the solutions have multiple layers if you want to go there. Uh, but just, you know, by default, with every array, you've got snapshots, you've got the, the policy-driven tools, and you can turn this on for any application running on any Power Mac, just go and have fun. Right? So um, we're trying to help customers get some base recovery into every system that they're running, um, and then be able to upgrade that to more advanced versions to meet whatever their business requirements are. I'm Tarek Jamal, and I'm the VP of Analytics and Chief Information Officer at Umbra. At Umbra, we pride ourselves on original design. Our products are distributed in over 120 countries, 75,000 stores, and supported by our offices in Canada, the US, Europe, China, and Brazil. These offices, plus owning and operating our own manufacturing plants, leads to our systems running close to 24 by 7. With aging hardware and painful management, we started to look at new technologies. Not only were we looking at the existing solution stack that we had, but also went out to the market and contacted vendors like Dell to understand what do they have. The most important point to start, and usually in IT, we start with our technical problems and, and what do we have as a technical side, things that the business doesn't see. So from a technical perspective, you know, we we're always worried about our firmware updates causing our whole system to break. Firmware upgrades actually required the whole system to go down as we did a firmware upgrade, even though we had a dual chassis environment. Um, there was issues with hardware diagnosis where logs would tell us a certain problem, but reality was something totally different, causing the team to run down rabbit holes for sometimes weeks for no reason at all. And the UI that we had in the technology was just very clunky. Very difficult for the team to understand where to go, where to see things, how to actually do it, things within the, the UI. Moving the Delta stack, maintenance is a breeze. With call home functionality, the team isn't going in to identify what potential problem would be. The system is actually identifying potential problems and sending off a call home to Dell, dispatching equipment and a technician to our call location to replace equipment before it even fails. With easy firmware upgrades, 
Dell not only has a variety of tools, but a white glove service where the team actually can connect with Dell technicians who walk us through a firmware upgrade. So the team isn't doing a firmware upgrade for the first time. They actually have somebody who's done it before with them. Management is a lot easier than before. Menus are not complicated. We're not talking about a UI that requires a team to spend two, three, four, five days to try and understand how do I navigate this. Uh, along with that, it's easy to understand. The health checks at a glance provide us with meaningful alerts and what to action. And of course, high availability means high availability. Dual ch chassis configuration means that we can actually take care of 99, over 99% of our, our maintenance tasks with no downtime to the business. But of course, technology doesn't exist without the business. And we all know that. That's the only reason that we have a technology department in the first place. So what were the business challenges? What was causing us to look at new technology, even because of our, not just because of our aging hardware, but because of the business? As our organization becomes a lot closer to the consumer, not only with D2C efforts or direct to consumer efforts like our umber.com website, uh, but as well as social efforts um, and video, all of this means an increased amount of data, images, as well as the data that we have, right? When we talk about shipping more widgets, well, we ha now have more orders. We have more data that we need to run analytics on. Umber's accelerating growth meant that we're maxing out our technology. Uh, and we needed to replace everything. That led us to a platform that includes Dell's PowerMax, PowerEdge, as well as a Dell Core network that ties all of these together. Um, the storage platform allows us to run everything effectively, and the compute platform allows us to, to run a lot of our more complex compute on-prem. Everything from our product lifecycle management technology, right, where every idea actually gets logged into a system. Things like our ERP, SAP, where manufacturing and distribution is all running from not just our offices, but as well as our manufacturing plan. And then supply chain, because as you sell more, you now need to forecast and understand how you're gonna, and everyone knows that this is one of the biggest problems for 2021, how are we gonna make sure that we have the right stock when we need it? Um, and then of course, the storage for all the data that we've been creating, right? So as we create all of this data, where are we gonna store it? So understanding, allows, understanding our business allows us to align with the business strategies and make sure that when we're replacing that hardware, we know that we're getting what we need to, to be able to capitalize on the opportunities that are gonna present themselves. The outcome of the Dell equipment, the whole stack, allows us to be 400% more efficient to produce key reports and run critical processes. Everything from releasing orders in SAP or forecasting our, our next day's requirements, as well as 500% faster response time on SAP BW updates. So when we're running our reports and analytics, we actually are 500% faster. And all this runs on Intel Optane SCM drives. Along with that, talk about the data that we're increasing and the amount of video and image content, as well as just core data that we are creating. We got a 3.4 to one data reduction ratio to reduce storage space needs and costs. And of course, the business cares about uptime just as much as technology and the IT team does. We see excellent resilience and it allows us to be operational 24 by seven. Unfortunately, I'd love to be there to take your questions, but I'm not. If any of you have questions, please reach out to me, whether that's via LinkedIn, uh, Tarek Jamal, Umbra, to find me, or you can always reach out to your Dell rep and I'm sure they'll get in contact with my Dell rep. And I'm more than willing to help you navigate through your decision-making. This is an important decision for every organization. Um, and I think that being somebody who's been working with this and having a team that's worked with this previously, not only myself, but my team can help you understand what do we have today and how happy we are with the solution. Thanks. All right, we thank Tariq for taking his time to do that. Um, his plan was to come out and join us at Dell Tech World in person. Since he wasn't able to do that, we've got that wonderful recording of him talking about the solutions that we built uh, together to solve problems for Umbra. Um, so it's always useful to have uh, customers talking about uh, the things that we've done together. Uh, of course, since Turk is already in production and the new uh, Dell 2500 and 8500 systems are just coming to market in July, um, you know, he's talking about the prior generation of systems, um, but all of the same core software features and such around 
uh, replication and snapshots and all that were applicable for him. Um, and the data reduction guarantee was three and a half to one for his infrastructure. Um, the new version is four to one, um, but all the same kind of things apply. So we really appreciate Tariq uh, doing that for us. Uh, and we've had a lot of uh, great conversations around his solution and the things that uh, he's done for the business. Uh, it's been great for them and, and we're thrilled to be able to be part of that and would love to help do the same kind of thing for your infrastructure. Um, so whether you're doing traditional apps or next gen apps, uh, we've got great infrastructure tools that we can bring to bear uh, to help you implement things uh, at scale with resilience, um, with the ability to be flexible, uh, change over time. We've got, as always, the options for like Apex to be able to do things on demand um, or standard you know, capital purchases, whatever you want to do. Um, so let us know what your requirements are. Let us know what you'd like to build. Um, we're here and glad to help you all move that forward. Um, so with that, um, I'll put this to an end. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. And um, thanks for your interest in Dell and our infrastructure tools and how we might be able to help you build a better technology platform for your business. Have a great day.